This time... Let's cut the cake! It's a special time of year at our school. In Warwick! And celebration is in the air. But first, there are some challenges to embrace. You eat and drink nothing throughout the day. And lessons to learn. We're very tired. Thomas is annoying me. Not much I can do. your hair so you can put it in like a proper, proper bun. Oh. <laughs> Hello, what would you like? That sounded pretty good. <laughs> I'm a bit overwhelmed. Welcome to our school. There are over 1,100 students at our school, and not one is the same as another. This individuality is what makes the school a great place to learn, not just about regular subjects, but about each other, which is exactly what Miss Doherty is doing this morning in her languages class. Overall, in first part, I think we speak about 58, 59 different languages in our school community, which is a really wonderful thing. I'm going to step down today as the teacher we are going to have the opportunity to teach each other some languages. JP, would you like to start us off? I guess. Okay, so you speak Portuguese, okay? Hola, como estás? It's like right. Spanish. It's very similar to Spanish, but slightly different pronunciation, isn't it? It was really interesting for me because, like, I know the people in my class because we've known each other for quite some time, but I don't know, like, their cultures and everything. Which language are you going to teach us? Luganda. Okay, Ooh. go on. First, so, how are we going to say hello? What's this? What's this? What's <laughs> Raymond had this language. Oh, he was yeah. Actually, kind of surprised me. What's a sotia? What's so sotia? His family, I think, is from Africa, so like I couldn't even pronounce one word without making a mistake. Like half these languages, I didn't even exist. So now we're gonna give some Farsi. Phenomenal. Salam, John Ajora, Bechel Aspi. Salam, John Ajora. I think that it's really amazing that we're all part of the diversity of Firth Academy. All of the people's different cultures, nationalities and ethnicities, because they're all different. I'm going to teach Urdu. I'm going to say hello, how are you? OK, are we dating? Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Beautiful. My name is Aiza. I would describe myself as kind, generous and artistic. I look up to my dad a lot. He's not the best dad, really. Some plans there. Like, I usually do gardening with him. That garlic will be ready in two months' time. Garlic? Yeah. I look up to my dad because I want to be a doctor just like him, so I always read his medical journals. I want to be like him so much, so um, I feel like if I'm going to follow in my dad's footsteps, I need to learn now. Ready for your assistance? Half and half. I still need to do lots of work. I love school because it's the best thing ever. It's where all my friends are, and I love my friends the most. She's mine. <laughs> Lorraine goes to the same mosque as me. Her dad is what you call an ostaji, which is like a priest, and my dad always goes to the mosque. So like, they became friends there. Me and Lorraine carried on the tradition. Besties! <laughs> It's April 2021, the month of Ramadan, which is a really important time in the Our School calendar. We have a large community of Muslim students and teachers, so there are a lot of people fasting, which is today's topic in Miss Hussein's PSHE lesson. So at the moment, at this present moment in time, I am fasting. Put your hand up if you are fasting. If somebody tell me then what fasting is. Isa, go on. Um, fasting is um, when for a month called Ramadan, we um, fast in the name of God and we eat food before sunrise and then we break our fast at sunset. Excellent. In between those hours, can I drink any water? No, you can't eat. No, you can't eat or drink. Whilst we're fasting, we think about the poor people in other countries, everything that what they're thinking and what they're feeling. Fasting, it teaches you like patience and to be grateful, basically. Ramadan means getting closer to God. 
in Ramadan you're supposed to better yourself? Like usually I'm just like staying on my phone but because it's Ramadan like I would read Quran and I would like go to mosque and that kind of thing. You like the bad traits that you have you make let go of them and with that month it helps you like it's like a fresh start. It feels good because you know that other people are doing it with you so you're not alone. That feeling of togetherness is the inspiration behind Mr Jones's Solidarity Fast. We started the Solidarity Fast as a way for all of us, regardless of our heritage, background or religion, to learn the self-discipline and roots of respect that are involved in fasting for us just for one day, as opposed to for the whole of Ramadan. So Miss Ahmed has come along to the class to find out who wants to get involved. There could be a number of reasons why you want to do it. It's about the experience, it's about you supporting your peers and I'm here to actually ask and invite anybody who wants to join in but remember we're up at 2.45 in the morning we keep our fast and then we open it at nine o'clock at night but that means if you want to do that version the proper version is you eat and drink nothing throughout the day. So we're doing a solidarity fast which basically just means we just don't drink or eat until sundown. <laughs> the Solidarity Fast is basically like a little mini version of what they're doing for our whole month. If you want to get involved in the Solidarity Fast, we'll have a quick show of hands to see if you are going to. I'm fasting because I've always wanted to know what it felt like. And it's kind of a support thing. I'm going to do the Solidarity Fast because most of my friends are Muslim. It had helped me understand everyone else's beliefs and how they're feeling during Ramadan. Other people doing the solidarity first, I feel like that's that's respectful. I thought it was a good idea to like get people to understand like what we do in the month rather than just like making assumptions. So it's an it's also a nice thing to do like together. Tomorrow will be a very different type of day for our solidarity fast volunteers. <laughs> Over in Mr. Hassan's science class, he's chosen a very appropriate topic. Okay, so guys, I'm, I'm really tired. Do you know why I'm tired? Because I'm fasting. Yeah, I forgot to wake up early in the morning to have my breakfast. Do oh. you know the last time I ate was probably at like 9.30 in the evening yesterday. Ooh. Yeah, it's a long time. So my question to you is, what does food do for me when I actually eventually have it? Um, it gives you energy. It gives you energy, and energy is what I am lacking. So, in today's lesson, I'm going to focus on nutrition. What do we have to keep in mind when we're talking about nutrition? Vitamins and minerals and like fats okay. and all. How many people bring in lunch boxes? Yo, would you be comfortable enough to tell me what is in your lunch box? I usually just have a normal sandwich, sometimes I'm brown, sometimes I'm white, whatever we have in. It's usually the cheese or peanut butter. And then I always have some raisins. Okay. I usually have like a little snack. Would your lunch be the same as the lunch from someone from Africa? This is in the hottest part of the world. We're talking. When I was in Nigeria, like our basic lunch would be either rice, rice. beans, plantain. Yeah, like lunchtime, I'll bring it in a flask. Like I normally have rice and plantain, beans and plantain. The location can determine the type of foods that they need. For example, in Somalia, they wouldn't need certain foods to try and insulate them as much because it is really, really hot over there already. So their lunch boxes would be completely different. Mostly my culture, we love rice. Like, we just eat rice, like, nearly every day. Raymond, I wanted to hear yours, because you said it was amazing. So we have pilau rice, beans, strapati, and plantain. Woo. If everybody in the world all liked the same things and like did the same stuff, there wouldn't be like any diversity to it. Yo, the best lunch when Ramadan is over, I'm gonna make it and bring it to school. I like that some people have different cultures and that kind of thing, because then like we see the different traditional foods and that kind of thing. I think food is the best. I think it's because of Ramadan. It's making me want food. With school over, there's only one thing on Isa's mind. Because it's the month of Ramadan and my family is fasting, I'm going to help my mum making the food for me break our fast. When we break our fast, we usually eat like traditional food, like something called pakoras and samosas. It's like pastries. 
They're really, really delicious. And my favorite is biryani. It's a type of traditional rice with chicken, and like it's just really, really yummy. How, how is the roll? It's really, really nice. Thank you, Aida. When I start eating my food, I feel so happy. And like, I'm not even thinking about the food, I'm thinking about how proud I am to like not break my fast, eating like a chocolate egg or something. That's really nice. Thank you, Aiza. The day of the Solidarity Fast is here. And Miss Robinson is checking in with our volunteers. Right, can I ask please who is taking part in the Solidarity Fast for today? Okay, so we've got JP, we've got Blake, and we've got Tom. Did anybody do anything different to repair? Or have you just not eaten absolutely anything as of yet? JP? I woke up early. You woke up early? What time did you get up? Like, at two. At two this morning? Yeah. And what did you eat? I just ate, I think, cereal and then I went back to sleep. Blake, have you eaten through the night? No? Tom? Nope. No? I started my fast at like five o'clock last night. Last thing I ate, last thing I drank. And then, you know, you're meant to wake up at like 10 to three in the morning. I didn't do that. So now I'm hungry. Sabba, have you got any tips for JP, Blake and Tom? Uh, don't think about food or water. That's all I can think about right now. What kind of like symptoms do you get, Tim Zanas? You get stinky breath. Really? Yeah, anything else, Lorraine? Headaches. Headaches. We get used to it. First big challenge of the day, make it through the temptations of morning break. By the time it was break, my stomach, it was like, fully aching. I had to like drink something. Today is not my day. Never mind, JP. There's always next year. Thomas and Blake, however, are still going strong. Maybe Thomas is going a little too strong? Tom is be quiet. How are you not out of energy yet? You're fasting. Well, fasting has made me more energetic somehow. Thomas, stop! And more annoying. I think the food calms him down. <laughs> so, how do you feel right now? Terrible. I'm very tired. Thomas is annoying me. Not much I can do. Hungry. Hungry, that's it. Hungry and angry. Hungry. I was meant to wake up at 10 to 3. My alarm went off. I woke up at, um, at half seven. My alarm was still going off. Well done for fasting, though. <laughs> I'm just going to sleep through English, probably. <laughs> Even Mr Jones is looking for some advice on how best to make it through the day. I want some fasting tips. I, like, literally, I'm dreading it right now because I only had one Nutella toast last night. <laughs> In the mornings, before sunrise, you'll get up at some point and um, eat as much as you can. Mostly, I just have, you know, like breakfast, cereal, milk. I would normally drink milk, then have something on the side, like um, kebabs. So I woke up at like 2.50 in the morning. This morning, I had chips and chicken and tropical juice. When you think about it, it sounds difficult, but once you actually start doing it, it's easy. I don't feel hungry. Like, I, I can watch people eat. Like, I'm going to eat my food later, so I don't want food. You get used to it really quick. It's just like an uh, instant, like, you already know what you're doing. School makes fasting easier because we start school at 9 o'clock and then we stay at school for till 3 o'clock. That's six hours of the day gone. It sounds like practice makes perfect with fasting. So no wonder our one-day fasters are starting to struggle. I don't know what came into my head when I said I'd fast. I must have been possessed. You might think like, oh, it's just easy to do it. You're just not eating and drinking. But you start to get like tired and headache and like fatigue and all that. To help remind the class that part of Ramadan is to think about those that are less fortunate, Mrs Arundel has invited two special guests to talk to them. My name is Johnny and this is Christy and we're from Roundabout. So Roundabout's a youth homeless charity, so we work with 16 to 25 year olds who are homeless or at risk of homelessness. We're going to do a session, we're doing different activities. We want to hear what you've got to think, so get involved when we ask you to. So I'm going to ask you guys what a homeless person is, uh, yeah? A person who can't afford any type of shelter. What do they look like? They look scruffy and yeah. like their clothes might be ripped and stuff. Yeah. Do they usually have dogs? Yeah. 
So you might normally see a homeless person with a dog in, like, in town. So what have you just done? By saying that all homeless people are like that, there's a word beginning with S, which we've all, we've all just done. Yeah? Stereotype. Stereotypes. Yeah, that's the stereotype of homeless people. So if someone says the word homeless, that's what we all picture in our mind, what you've just described. And that's true. Stereotypes have some truth for them, but not all homeless people necessarily look like that or are living on the streets. Christy has actually experienced homelessness before, and so she's going to share a bit of her story for you to kind of hear what, what she's been through. I mean, Christy looks like a normal person. Like, she doesn't look really homeless. And, like, it kind of proves that when you see a person, you, you don't know everything about them, like, what's happened in their past. When I was 18, my mum was always at work, and as a way of asking for help and attention, I started taking a bank card. In the beginning, I would take 10 or 20 pounds, but eventually I ended up spending nearly over a grand. My mum kicked me out. I think I was quite shocked because you don't just look at someone and be like, oh, they've been through a traumatic experience. In 2017, my daughter got taken off me and my boyfriend left me. How did she go through that? Like, how was she able to even tell us the story? It's like pretty sad. It was very surprising. I was shocked. I didn't know somebody could go through that much in life. I started getting help from Roundabout. They helped me with my benefits, moving into a new flat, I was attending college doing short courses, and I've just got a job. Homeless people seems like a pretty easy concept, but there's so many different things that happen. Johnny and Christie's eye-opening talk has inspired some of the class to help out. We're delivering this food to the homeless. Right, are we ready to start, come on? Right. Yeah. Pasta, onions. They need bananas. It did feel really good to help and make the food parcels and all that. And then, obviously, they'll need milk. The fast is hard, but at least I can stop it whenever I want. If I'm feeling too bad, I can stop it. Homeless people don't get to choose if they get a skip day on hunger. They have to just keep pushing through it. With the food parcels packed, Mrs Arundel can deliver them to the Roundabout charity. The sun is finally setting on a long day of fasting, and I think everyone should be feeling really proud. Today was really hard, but it gives you like a bit more of like a sense for what all my Muslim friends have gone through, and now I can't wait to eat my chicken. I think that the boys did really good in the solidarity fast, and I think they was really supportive and kind of them because like not all people would do that kind of thing. It was so amazing. It was so nice to finally break my fast. <laughs> Bella, what have you got there, Tom? Food, edibility, foodage. I was so hungry and I just loved it. Tom, is it good? Mm, it was perfect. It's the end of the Solidarity Fast, and Ramadan has also come to a close. Traditionally, the end of Ramadan is marked by the Festival of Eid. In Warwick! Eid is the best thing ever. Eid marks the end of Ramadan, and it's a big celebration for all the Muslims to mark the end of the month. I think it's like Christians having Christmas. The food that's made on Eid is... It lasts three days. And, like even a week. You get dressed in some like new clothes. We got presents, best part. We got money, second best part. And we got to eat a lot, third best part. Guys, please take a seat to celebrate their achievement. We decided to celebrate Eid with the students and to try and bring everyone a little bit closer. It was nice celebrating Eid with our teachers and seeing my friends as well. You had a quite a nice experience of opening your fast together with your family and celebrating Eid. Uh, so we'd like to celebrate Eid with you as well. So you may help yourself to some food. We ate samosa and we also ate uh, spring rolls. This is quite nice. And the food was really nice. I loved the food. The nice thing about the Eid party was that they were wearing their traditional clothing. <laughs> oh, 
and they were telling their friends about their traditional clothes. Work it! Work it! <laughs> this is my kurta, it's traditional mostly in Pakistan, and this is my headscarf. All the outfits were really interesting and had a lot of backstory. It was just overall really fun. That is a really well designed cake. I think that Blake and Thomas had lots of fun for their first Eid party because they got cake and they got um, traditional food. I was happy that we could share our experience with them. Come on, just cut the cake! What's the cake? That one's the first Eid party that, that I've had in this school. I was just like really, really happy. I feel like thankful to come to a school where there's so many different people because they're all from different backgrounds and they're all from like different countries and religions and you like learn more about the whole world. Whoa! Next time, the stakes are high. Losers always go first. As year seven, take on year eight. Yeah, like, was... like this. <laughs> so you go first and then I'll go and then you go. No, you go first. Fine, then Ola. Hi. Islam Nikom. War. Ni hao. Salam. Marhaba. Guten Tag. I can't think of any more. Can you stop blinking? <laughs> stop blinking, okay. Why do you mean stop blinking like so rapidly? <laughs>